All right, uh, today what we're looking in lesson 10 here is, uh, well, first of all, states of motion. And so there are three states of motion. So the first one is if the object's not moving, so we say then it's at rest. Um, the second one, and so these are in your notes, and the second one it could be travelling at constant uh, velocity and the third state of motion is that it's undergoing acceleration all right so in dynamics in this section that we're looking at here um, we study the causes okay I already mentioned that previously in the last um, last lesson lesson nine right but the main gist of this lesson is a thing called Newton's first law. All right, now also you sometimes hear it <coughs> referred to as Galileo's law of inertia. All right, and the reason for that is that um, Galileo had already developed some ideas about about motion and things, and then Newton expanded on those and added a bit more to it. So, um, and he then Newton formulated the the uh, the law. So, the first law says that an object. will remain, and this is in your notes, at rest or in uniform motion All right, there's those couple of dot, uh, spaces that are missing in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. <clears throat> All right, so basically what does it mean? It means that something's going to keep doing what it's doing unless a force acts on it. Now, in everyday life, of course, with friction, friction being a force, um, if we give something a push, it doesn't move forever because of, of friction. So that would be the unbalanced force that was changing um, the motion. All right. So first, there's a couple of notes in your nut, in your in your uh, in your notes and the first one is that applies in any direction particular direction all right so if you roll a ball along the table for example in the horizontal direction because there's friction it will slow down but in the uh, vertical direction it doesn't move up or down um, because there's no unbalanced force so um, and the other th thing to note from that is that if your force is equal to zero is some of the forces to be correct then your velocity equals a constant now, it says in brackets that it may be non-zero, so um, examples, and there's a couple of diagrams in your notes, which are these ones here. So these are the ones here, so that second note in particular is that, like the bike rider here, um, pushing on the pedals, saying they're applying 60 Newton in the forward direction, 
and then we've got drag, wind resistance, etc., etc., of 60 newton, but they're going at 8 meters per second, and so the sum of the forces there is zero. All right, so it remain constant doing this itself because there's um, not any unbalanced forces, the forces are balanced. Now originally, of course, when the cyclists started from rest to get up to the 8 metres per second, they would apply a bigger force than the, the drag um, <clears throat> to initially get to the 8 metres per second, but once they're at the 8 metres per second, it stays the same. So the one on the left there, the, the plane, there's four forces, there's gravity trying to pull it down, there's lift opposite direction holding it up, we've got the engine thrust pushing it forward and drag, so when they're all balanced, it's going <coughs> to um, fly in level, the altitude's not going to change, um, and it's going to be at constant velocity. Alright, so here's an example, and this is, example's a fairly common kind of application of Newton's uh, first law. Um, even in year 12 exams, there's been often been questions that along ask something similar. So during a car accident, the pas passion who's tra passenger is travelling without a fastened seat belt may fly through the windscreen and land on the road during a car accident. Explain using Newton's first law of motion why this will occur. So remember Newton's first law of motion, let's flick back to it. Here it is, an object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So what does that mean? That means that during a car accident we've got a person sitting here on the uh, the seat. The seat and the person are all moving this way in this direction together. And remember they do not have a seat belt on. So in the crash when the car stops and the, the seat stops there's got to be a force acting on the person for them to stop as well. So if there's a not a fastened seat belt, then the seat belt is not there to provide the force to uh, stop the person. Friction between their bum and the seat is not going to be enough, and uh, so they could fly through the windscreen and land on the road. All right, so that's a whole um, explanation as to why. Now, how would we write that? <coughs> All right, so when these sort of things, they say explain Newton's first law of motion. So you need to do something along the lines and on the notes on the, the website, it's a little bit more detailed. So we need to say Newton's first law says uh, something will continue. Uh, in its motion unless acted upon by a force, unbalanced force alright so when the car stops, there uh, is no force on the passenger. <coughs> um, so he she um, continues uh, 
moving until I hit something. Right, something along those lines. But when you do it, it's it's important with this to state what Newton's first law says. So it says something's going to keep doing what it's doing unless an unbalanced force. So you need to say that, and then you need to say in this situation with the passenger, there's no um, <coughs> unbalanced force. There's no force on the passenger. Um, to stop them, so they continue to move. All right, so that's what you need to stick it to. You need to be thinking about what Newton's first law actually means. All right, sometimes I, with these type of questions, you read answers where people say, oh, the, the force pushes the person forward. There is no force pushing the for person forward, okay? The issue is that because they haven't got a seat belt, there's no force stopping them so they continue moving all right so that's new newton's first law again there's a couple of videos there on the website about newton's first law um on oh, one of them's uh professor julius sumner miller the one i think it's the one on the right there he's always a bit of a laugh pretty uh dynamic sort of a character um, it's the sort of stuff that I used to watch him on telly when I was a kid and uh, it was always a bit of fun. Anyway, that's it, alright. So problem set number 10 and of course if there's anything you're not sure about, make sure you ask.